Hey, Erica. Hi, how are you? Good, good. Thank you. How are you? Good. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. I can hear you great. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Okay. This is my first live, so. You are doing amazing. You joined. We're here. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you on. Really looking forward to our conversation. Um, just a quick introduction of myself. For those who don't know, my name is Maya and I'm the marketing intern here at Grid 110. Um, we're also going to have a pretty interactive live today. We would love to get your comments and reactions. And if anyone has any questions or topics that come up while we're talking, Feel free to drop those in the chat below. You can also use like the wave or the emoji reactions to react. Um, but we would love to hear what everyone's thinking or any comments or questions. And Erica, um, I would love for you to give a quick introduction of yourself and your company. Uh, thank you, Maya. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Erica Dwalkity, and I'm the founder of Fibra. And Fibra is a textile waste management system. We collect sort and recycle hard to recycle textile waste and we're based in the la county area so if you have materials in our area hopefully you'll be hearing from me soon <laughs> awesome cool yeah everyone definitely take her up on that um and first off you know to kind of break the ice and do something a little exciting i would love to see some of the pieces any cool pieces that you found in your recent collections uh, yes. So some of the, some of my favorite parts is going through, it sounds like maybe a little bit weird to go through people, <laughs> but I found totally. some very things. and to show just a couple like older style t-shirts that I found, I'm not going to call them vintage. They might be, but I'm not sure. Um, I found this Michael Jordan space jam t-shirt. Oh, okay. That's and super cool. it was a, the 20th anniversary, I believe, of the Jordan brand. So oh. it, it's in great shape still, and, and I love it. I want to find someone that's going to either give it a new home or, I don't know, frame it maybe. Yeah. Um, so these are just two fun t-shirts and then an old Nintendo shirt. Nice. Wow. Yeah. That's the really cool. brand as well. <laughs> cool. So. That's so awesome. I heard um. you went. What did you find? Yeah, I was gonna say like, I'm obviously not a textile recycler, but I um, I love to shop small and I also love going to like thrift stores and flea markets and there's a ton in the LA area. And I just love like checking them out and seeing what you could find. Kind of like you showed just now, it's like things that you wouldn't find at any other like department store or something like that. And people will see you out wearing it and it's like, oh wow, like where'd you get that? And it's like well, this is like vintage or something like that. Um, but two items that I recently picked up. Um, one is this silk robe, actually. Um, and it's like this like nice, like goldenish color. It has like a tie. It has like pockets. Um, it needs to be ironed right now. <laughs> um, but what I like about it is that it is like 100% silk. And like when I was looking for like a silk robe or like silk sheets, like it would always say like, oh, like 50% silk and like 50% something else. And I'm like, well, like that's not really silk. Um, so I liked that uh, I found something like that there. And it was cool too, cause the woman running like the stand, it was, she was, I was talking to her, I got to meet her. I knew that my purchase went directly to her. Um, uh, and yeah just telling me she had collected all these secondhand clothes from friends or family over the years um, and then the other thing was this pair of jean shorts they're Levi's um, just your classic you know black jean shorts um, great for the summer so also like a great deal too because Levi's are usually pretty expensive <laughs> um, it's a great such a great heritage brand that you just they ah, it's hard they last a long time and that's why, like, you know, and hopefully maybe we'll get to kind of that point later on is that, you know, quality, quality garments and quality clothing should last you a long time. And, and it's worth the value that you put into them. Um, so I like that. I like it. Levi's great brand. Totally. Yeah. Thank you. And that's such a good point. Like really investing in what you're wearing and knowing that it has like that durability um, and that quality, like you said. So I'm so excited to jump right into it. Um, my first question for you is like, 
how did you hear about our Grid 110 community and what um, inspired you to apply? I think I was, I was watching like either your acceptance video or your intro video and you were talking about how like you had applied once and this wasn't your first time applying or something like that. So I would just love to hear about that, that backstory of that journey. Yeah, so I actually heard about Grid 110. So two previous companies that went through the program, um, Hype and Vice and then Community Made. I knew, I went to, actual, I went to school with uh, the Hype and Vice, um, one of the founders, which I loved because I remember her talking about it in class. And then to think, to see like where it's grown is, is pretty special and unique. Um, and then I got invited to one of the pitch nights um, for the mm -hmm. startup groups. And I kind of just fell in love. And at that moment, I had the idea of Fibra, and, but it was still in like this like pre, pre idea, idea stage. And that's the first time that I applied was more on, in the ideation stage of the business. And I didn't make it in. So I waited about a year and then I reapplied for the um, summer cohort which is more of one that like you have to have like some revenue, some traction. And I kind of had started, you know, doing home collections and, you know, seeing a little bit of movement on like where I want to drive my business and I reapplied. And then the second time around I got in, which honestly made it even more special than the first time. Um, Cause I think it just gave me something more to fight for and it made it so much more enjoyable. <laughs> Totally. And you can kind of like see your growth as well. Like you said, the different stages you were in going through that process and applying. Um, and also like it is exciting to, to hear like that you had these connections to, in the community prior and kind of now being like really in it in the program, um, seeing like what it's like, you know, and that kind of leads me to my next question. You know, now that we're in the second half of our summer program, really in the meat of it, um, what has it been like so far? Like any any challenges, any accomplishments, any particular lessons that you've taken away right so far? Something I feel like I've taken away is I realized how much I hadn't focused on the foundation, like the, the foundation of my business. You know, when you start a business, sometimes it's just, you know, don't be afraid to fail and just like put something out there and, and like see what happens and see how people react. And I like that mentality as an entrepreneur, but also it's, Grid 110 has taught me how to really lay that solid foundation. So it's it's been a little, I don't want to call it overwhelming. It hasn't been overwhelming, but it's been a lot of information to take in. And I always want to like each week I go back and I kind of execute on the new things that I've learned. Um, or if it's just kind of diving in a little bit deeper on something I've already addressed with my business, but taking it to that next step. Um, yeah, they and they ask the hard, they ask the hard questions, all of our... <laughs> All of our um, speakers, they're great at, you know, talking to us and, and really asking us the difficult questions and pitching. Oh my gosh, the pitching. Spur of the moment pitching. It's, yes. <laughs> it's all the butterflies out of your system, for sure. Mm -hmm. Totally. Even right now with this being your first live, um, you know, with, with Grid on 10, we're so honored to have you for your first live. Um, it's great to hear that the program's been going well and you've been kind of like getting and throwing yourself into all of that. Um, but now I would just, I'm so excited to hear more about Fibra. Like, tell me, how did Fibra come to be? Like, what drew you to start this company? Like, what's the story behind your founding? I know that you have always really worked with textiles, been kind of like working in that space and loved like the hand and the feel of different products. Um, but what is that story like? So I, yes, I, I've kind of worked with textiles most of my life. And I like to think of it as, you know, materials and textiles have, textiles have always just like been a part of my life, but I never really, until recently, I feel like it's, it's always been there in my life. And it was like, finally, I'm coming to this moment where I can like utilize my experience and my love and desire to like have my own business and I can kind of marry those two things together mm -hmm. um and it, it kind of all started like when I was growing up in Kansas you know I was a part 4-H I did like the sewing and the like construction projects and like I made <laughs> high school like I was that girl and and I loved it because it was so talk about being unique it's like when you make something out of your own materials it's unique to you no one else is going to have that same design um, so yeah, I've been working with it since I was really young 
And it wasn't after until it wasn't af until after I graduated that I really started to question like, where do all of these materials go? Like I was in the product development, you know, all these like classes for, for apparel. And I was like, I understood the, the front half of it and how it was produced. But I was like, well, what happens to, no one taught us about like what happens to these materials when you're done with them. And, oh, the more I dug the, the scarier <laughs> vibes. And I think it really kind of hit me when I realized that. So on average, annually, 17 million tons of textile waste or clothing waste ends up in our landfill every year. And to put that in perspective, that is one semi truck load of clothing every single minute going into oh. our landfill. It just wow. it, the, the fact that we produce so much waste in this world where, and all of it actually can be recycled or those resources still can be used in one way or another. Even if it's not, you know, making it back into a new garment, those are still valuable resources that can be utilized. Um, so as soon as I started to figure out like just the sheer volume that the world is getting rid of every single year, it just blew my mind. And it, it really frustrated me, I think, more when I, you know, we always talk about greenwashing and we talk about businesses not doing their part. But I realized that it's, it's the whole supply chain. We all need to work together to kind of fix this issue. So when I saw that no one was actually handling the um like the materials themselves so like people were doing a really great job of developing technologies to get rid of the materials other people were doing like brands were doing a great job of you know, making more sustainable materials so everybody was like focused on the front the very beginning and the very very end of the supply chain but no one was really focused on like how we're gonna get these get all of this materials in one collective space to actually recycle them so I was like, no one's doing it. So I guess, you know, I decided to do it. <laughs> that's yeah. how Fibro was born. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And just having you like come to that realization and then be like, like you said, like, okay, I'm gonna take that on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what was that? We, we talked the other day and it was like, um, crazy equals, what was it? Crazy. Um, oh, um, like, crazy equals like crazy impact or something, or yes, something yes. Like that. impact like we, we got this uh, I'm yeah. gonna <laughs> exactly it's like you have to be crazy enough to take on something like that but you're gonna output some some crazy amount of, of, of impact yeah um, that's you know the the impact for the entire industry as a whole because again we need all we need to work together to solve this mm -hmm. totally and I'm wondering, like, what fibers do you work with specifically? Yeah, I can kind of take you through the process quickly. So when when I do a collection, either from a brand or a direct-to-consumer, so like I come to your house, mm -hmm. once it's collected, I bring it back to our warehouse here in Southgate. And at that point, it's sorted by fiber content, um, typically uh, polyester, cottons, um, poly cotton blends, um, any nylons, and then I kind of have a, a, a bin that's more of just the ones that like I'm 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 still a startup like I'm still learning so I have some bins that it's like okay I'm gonna get to these when I have a solution it type of uh, type of work so when when I bring it in I sort it by the fiber content and then from there it's. D, so I take all the like fixings off of it. So all like the metal um, zippers and, and all these like finishes so that I can put them in the correct bin to actually be sent to my processor. Um, so I work with people from people here in LA to uh, process them like Arizona, people over on the East Coast, oh, wow. hopefully at some point, you know, I, large enough that we can ship some materials over to Europe. Europe is doing amazing work with, you know, recycling textiles. Um, but you need volumes and truckloads so to get it over there so with with time we'll get there but so each material is kind of treated a little bit differently um, and how I like to think about it is that so that you have like natural fibers and then you have like man-made fibers those are the two biggest buckets you have okay. and 
natural fibers, your cottons, your hemp, things like that, what came out of the ground can go back into the ground type of mentality. And so that's mm -hmm. the way to recycle it. Like cotton is biodegradable. And something I, it, it was a project I'd done early on at the beginning, <laughs> the beginning of Fibra, when I was just kind of, I think it was back in 2019. And for some reason I still, I still have it with me. So this is an old little piece of, um, mm -hmm. this is a screen printed t-shirt. It was a cotton poly, or it was a cotton, 100% cotton t-shirt, but it had a, so screen printing is technically, a, a, most of them are plastic based, so they don't biodegrade. But I think this just shows you a good example of like, this is holes in, in the screen print. So I, I literally buried this in the ground and then I just waited and then there was no cotton left. And then all is left is this like, you know, plastic material. So that's like, that just kind of like gives you an example of like, you know, what, came from the ground, can go back into the ground. Um, but then cotton itself can also be recycled into a new yarn. Um, same with like polyester. I have a solution for polyester as well. So with those types of solutions, you once you sort the materials, it's shredded and then it's cleaned and it's respun into like a new yarn. And typically right now, uh, recycled yarns can't, they're not strong enough to be it's it's like its own yarn solely so it has to be kind of respun with a new virgin yarn but as long as we're taking a virgin and a recycled material and putting them together it's it's getting rid of those materials um so with time hopefully we'll get to a higher percentage of recycled fibers within like new garments and things like that so so yeah so like it, each fiber has a different solution and based on its fiber content it's processed in a different way I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That a hundred percent. And that thing that you showed, that's such a good kind of like example. Um, I never thought about it that way. Like you, you literally buried it into the ground. Huh? <laughs> and, um... and also like a good, a good example is, so instead of like recycling sometimes um, like cotton polys or like your jeans, a good example. So I did the same study with jeans, a hundred. So it was a high cotton content denim jean but it had the elastane in it. So the elastic, the thing that makes all of our jeans really nice to wear and like stretchy. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, that's not degradable. Um, and all that was left was like the little elastic, the little elastic bands, which was really cool to see. But sometimes it, it's hard to recycle. So um, people sometimes shred it. So this is like denim and mm -hmm. silk have. Um, just a little piece and it's shredded up and that can be used for like car door panel insulations. It can be used for housing insulation. There's a lot of different in case uses there. Um, so yeah, if it's not being recycled into new yarn, it's being downcycled into like insulation. Um, and there's also upcycling potential in all this material. So. Totally. <laughs> wow. I am learning so much. Um, and I love that how you have these like, the, the tactile examples actually here because that definitely like makes they're, it easier for me to understand they're my, i was like we are making this you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally i'm also curious like in a in a typical collection what do you see like i'm sure there's like you know like people's clothes people's shirts but like are there like tablecloths i can imagine or maybe just like old like i don't know other other like types of fabrics that aren't necessarily worn uh, yeah, so we also do collect um, kitchen and bath towels and, and bedding. So you can send, or we, we come and collect that because just like any other material, it's it's cotton. So cotton can be recycled. Um, and, and that's what it, it typically comes down to is what's the fiber content? Can we okay. do the actual fiber? Um, yeah, there's so so many end solutions to everything. Like textiles are all, all around us from like the chair that I'm sitting on has textiles on it to you know, your car seats to everything. So it just surrounds us on a daily basis. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all around us and it's not something we are always thinking about, like recycling to, in the traditional sense. Um, yeah. So it, again, like I see people commenting, like, it's so great that you're solving this issue. Yeah, it's one of those things that um, I'm not a big consumer myself. And I, and I think a, a reason why I didn't realize early on how big of an issue this was is because I don't buy a lot of 
I'm jeans in a, in a V-neck type of type of a person. And I kind of go through it until someone's like, you shouldn't wear that anymore. It's a little, <laughs> you know, I wear my things until like, I shouldn't wear them anymore. But so I'm not a big consumer myself. So I didn't see the impact I was making because I wasn't making that big of an impact. So yeah, trying to help everybody else. <laughs> totally. Um, kind of like switching gears. I know that you're, you've been focused on the consumer um, for like thus far in your business journey, but now you're kind of looking towards like targeting businesses. Um, but also you don't want to lose that focus on the consumer because it all starts with the consumer. Um, but what does that pivot kind of looked like and how did that come about in like in the, in the general, in the whole sense of your business and how, how it's going to flow, like coming in one end and going out the other. Um, what is that kind of looking like? Yeah. So when I first started, I, I wanted it to, I wanted fiber to be a customer based solution i wanted it to service customers because i always felt like brands were just creating all this material and they were leaving it up to their their customers to dispose of it when they're done and mm -hmm. i just didn't like that mentality so i wanted to provide solutions for the customers because they don't have billions of dollars backing them you know like these big brands they have so much money they sh they should be able to find a solution on their own um but with that being said, right now, out through this last year, I've definitely learned how we are not to the point yet where home collections and things like that are scalable. So I'm actually going to start drawing back the home collections and I'm going to kind of shift my focus more to the businesses where they have a higher volume of material coming in and out because I need the volumes to actually make the impact that I want and to hit the targets that my recyclers need. So I want to shift into more of a, a the business mindset. But with that, I did want to kind of keep a portion of, I wanted my efforts to still be benefiting customers. So I'll be doing one of two things um, here. So I do have a, a new website coming out. So all of this will be reflected yeah. in my website here um, next week, it'll go live. But I'll focus on one of two things. So one will be a host a bin so you can host a, a fiber bin where we will do collections for the bins and and where we're focused on is apartment complexes co-working spaces and universities so those are going to be our three targets and with that it allows me to still directly impact customers directly because at, in those moments you get a very high dense population of people who you can service with one one bin. So I wanted to kind of go that direction. Um, so it, it helps me actually help more people with less effort from my business and, and, and all the energy it takes to go to these collections. So it'll still be, it's, it'll still be a, a good deal of work, but it, it just kind of congregates all of that into one space. So we'll do a host event, and then we're also gonna start doing monthly collections with um, businesses directly. So apparel brands in downtown LA, I've done collections previously with brands and it tends to be, they like more of a recurring, a recurring schedule where they can kind of know that their, that their textile waste is being handled responsibly. And then they, they know they can rely on it on a, on a constant basis. So we'll start doing that with local businesses, apparel brands and other companies like, um, like event spaces, things like that. Um, so that's the other side of the, the business to business um, going to be launching here pretty soon. Wow, that's so exciting. That's those are these are huge developments um, for Fibra and kind of like I can see like you're starting to like really spread. It's also spreading your reach um, wider. Like you said, a, a little like less work to reach a lot more people um, and collect a lot more materials. So that's super exciting. And that's um, the like kind of like you shifting to focus still still focusing on the consumer and also like including like at the end of the day they're the ones um, bringing it to the bin uh, but then also like it, bringing the business into it uh, that's super exciting and just that's a huge moment of growth um, so congrats yeah. on that thank you <laughs> uh, and you know 
going like zooming out even more um this is kind of a big question <laughs> and okay. i know when i talked to you about textile recycling you said like when you first started learning about it it felt like you were opening a can of worms <laughs> that just kept like spilling out <laughs> um but what is it like like tackling this global issue of textile recycling and textile waste and what about the system as a whole needs to be changed or at least like addressed in a more proactive way? Yeah, so I quickly realized that it's going to be a marathon, not mm -hmm. a sprint. And it's going to be the longest marathon I've ever ran in my life. So it's and it's, you've run actual marathons. <laughs> I, I can't like my life. I'm never doing it again, except for <laughs> um, and it's it's one of those things that uh, it you just need it's just going to be such a long journey um it's such a long journey and then the landscape itself is going to be forever changing so with technology you know new government laws and regulations things shift so with each new like development or change, I have to reevaluate my business and kind of shift accordingly um, to make sure that we can still be a solution um, long term. So that's, that's what it takes to, to try to tackle it. Um, so it's gonna be a long journey. I'm excited for that journey, though. Um, and then what was the second part of your question? Oh, I was also just wondering, like, looking at the system as a whole, like the whole system of textile flow again how you said like fabrics come in they make the clothes um the clothes get sold and then how they're disposed of where like kind of what touch points in that and this whole system need to be like brought more to people's attention or just like addressed more directly yeah i think i i think it again i think i mentioned this earlier where it's it's a whole supply chain issue and we all need to be working together to make sure garments are manufactured correctly um, brands are designing with end in mind is is kind of a, a popular turn where it's like you're designing with materials that are easier to be recycled making it easier for these to find a second life again and again and again and consumers need to start like you know like requesting things not requesting so if you think about, I always like to think people, so people sometimes tell me, they're like, oh, I don't, I don't have a choice or I don't have a decision. I'm like, you make your decision each and every day with the money that you spend. I spend my money on a recycled, 100% recycled per like garment, which doesn't exist yet. Um, but it's like, if you put your money there, that's where they're gonna keep businesses, follow trends. If you tend to say, if you keep be buying $5 t-shirts, they're, the brand's like, oh, they want, customers want $5 t-shirts, so we're gonna keep making more and more and more $5 t-shirts. Now, if you say, I want a, I want a $20 t-shirt, because I know it's made out of recycled materials, I will buy that, I will pay for it. It's gonna start trending in that direction. Um, so I think of it, I honestly like to think of it as like a reverse engineering, where customers start kind of demanding from their brands that more of their garments are made from a higher percentage of recycled materials, recycled from clothing materials, because there's a difference. Um, and then brands have to go back to their manufacturers and, and request a higher, like they're demanding more re recycled materials. And then the manufacturers have to go source recycled materials. And then that comes to me because I'm producing the resource needed to kind of get there. So I see it reverse engineered in a way. Um, that's how my mind likes to work. So it starts with the customers, starts with all of you guys, <laughs> kind of putting putting your money where your mouth is and, and taking that initiative to, um, yeah, show, show what you want with your money. Definitely, yeah, I totally agree. Like it starts on the customer front. And I think also when those customers kind of like demand or, or show with their money or their voice that this matters to them, I do think that businesses will feel as though they have perhaps an advantage if they're able to say, well, you know, we, we have these collection bins or we use, you know, recycled materials um, and kind of attract the, the customer base 
who the growing customer base who wants that and wants to support that. And in light of you kind of mentioning like the five dollar t shirts that people will like wear for a month or so and then they'll like rip or like get destroyed in the wash. Um, you know, I, what comes to mind is like the term fast fashion. And I've seen so much recently of people talking about fast fashion on the internet. Um, and I'm just wondering like your thoughts on that. And I don't think, you know, we were talking the other day, like I don't think fast fashion will ever like not exist, but what like, what, what could kind of be done to like help or like counter fast fashion? Oh, that's a hard question. Um, <laughs> or like, will there ever even be like a viable alternative to fast fashion? Like probably not, but there are certain things that can like come into play to make it not as much, not as bad as it is now. Yes, I, I think so. It was so funny. Someone the other day, I was listening to, I was listening to someone speak and they're like, they didn't do it with ill intent. Like they, they totally meant something positive by this statement, but they're like, mm -hmm. why do we keep creating? So the reason like we have so much waste in the world, like, and people are continuously creating sustainable brands, like another sustainable brand, another sustainable brand, another sustainable brand. I'm like, you're just introducing more and more textiles into this market. Like you're just producing technically initially you're producing more waste with your sustainable company, which Again, I, I'm, I'm all for sustainable businesses and, and putting energy and effort into that. But I would love for people to focus on, you know, other ways to solve the problem because I believe these big conglomerates like H&M, Zara, like they have so much power in the industry that mm -hmm. only, with, only with your money, I, I believe, are you going to actually make changes where they're going to have to kind of change their – fast fashion is – it. I don't want to say it's never going to die, but it's just going to have to shift to being just more of a, it might just kind of weirdly transition into like that mid tier brand again. Um, like I can't even give a good example because just like our economy, like the middle, the middle brands, they're being squished out. Um, you only have luxury and you only have fast fashion. This middle mm -hmm. is getting squished out just like, you know, the middle class in, 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 our, in our economy. Mm -hmm. So I would hope to see that at one point, Zara, H&M, they, they ship their business model enough into kind of this mid-tier market. So they're producing higher quality materials. They can keep their customers, they can keep their income and their revenue, but they're just putting out better products. So, it, and, and I don't want to, I don't like to be negative when it comes to fast fashion businesses either. Like, yes, they're producing way too much because consumers are producing way or consuming way too much. I, I like to think of it like they're not really probably that great on their manufacturing, you know, their rules and regulations on like, I don't even want to get into that, but they, they do produce jobs. They do, they, they produce so many jobs. Like in America, they, they are bringing, you know, certain international countries, like, economic like they're growing the other countries economies because of the businesses that they're providing so you can't say that they're terrible through and through like they still do benefit the world in, in a way but i would hope that with all the messaging that they're putting out into the industry with their conscious lines and their you know all this like we're trying to do better like that they actually do better and they they create better products even even like a $10 increase and in like making a better t-shirt, you can pay the actual garment workers more and then you can actually probably make more money and then customers actually get a shirt that's going to last a long time or at least more than a year. Mm -hmm. So that's a very winded, long winded way of kind of getting there. And I don't even know if I answered the question, but that's a big can of worms, another can of worms. Um, so I hope I answered Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I threw, but that was a really tricky question. That was a big question at you, and I think you handled it perfectly. Um, and and I agree, like, what you were kind of saying at the end there, like, it sounds like a win-win situation. You just need to get everyone up and moving towards that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank you. 
of time yes of time thank you for uh yeah answering that i know again you're doing amazing first live my last question is a little bit or probably a little bit easier but um definitely really valuable and another big reason why we do these lives just to to hear more about our founders and connect with our community of entrepreneurs um i'd love to hear any advice any tips and tricks that you have for fellow founders fellow entrepreneurs who are going through like some of the same th things you are any kind of tidbits that you've learned and picked up probably just keep going um i i still feel there's many days that i'm like am, am i the person to solve this like am, am i that person um i won't know until i finish my marathon um but <laughs> it, it's one of those things that you just kind of have to keep going and you can't be af afraid to try like what what else am i going to do if, if i don't try to solve these issues um and then just ask ask for help the easiest thing is just to continue. I, I'm in the process of looking for like to get up, um, to buy or purchase or obtain just like a larger collection vehicle. And I was just talking to someone. I was like, yeah, you know, it's like, I'm on the market for you know a new van, but like you know with car the car market right now they're so pricey. Like there's they're hard to find. It's gonna take forever. To and the person I was talking to was just like, oh, I can help you with that. Like, oh, we'll, we'll solve that for you. Like, I'll, I'll just dig into my network. And you're just like, you think it's asking too much of people. And I wasn't even asking. I was just like making a statement. And then obviously it hasn't been solved yet. But it's just kind of like it gave me hope that people, people want to help good people, you know. And if you're trying to, if they believe in what you're doing, then you'll find people who want to support you. So. Totally. Yeah. That's amazing advice. Everyone watching, keep going, <laughs> ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. And always just talk about like what you've got going on. Who knows who could have a connection there or have some experience here or there. And I think I find that a lot too in our Grid 110 community, especially with like our amazing mentors and connecting with our alumni. Um, there's always someone who, whether it's in the Slack channel too, people just giving asks and gives. Um, it's always someone who could have some some information or some connection somewhere. Cool. Yeah. Well, I've had such a great time talking to you today. I just before we wrap up, I do want to know like if there's any final remarks you have, and also like is there anything coming up with Fiber? I know you mentioned the website um, that's going to launch. I think you said next week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So looking out for the website and anything, anything else you want to plug real quick before we hop off? Not, not really. I just want to say like, well, thank you. Thank you one for Grid 110 and then you as well for, you know, sitting here, everybody that's actually attended. Thanks. <laughs> um, last remarks would probably just be, we, it's going to be a slow process, but we are, we're working every day to kind of build on what we've started and, you know, keep it a single garment at a time. If like, if I get one, one t-shirt and I keep it out of the landfill and I put it somewhere good, like that's, that's the goal. Um, and I did have someone ask me in my, so I posted the, the live to my personal and so I cover like what, what inspired me or what motivated me to really get started. Um, <laughs> Also, someone asked me, what's what's a material that can't be recycled? And the answer to that is like pretty much everything can. And it, it's, it might not be recycled into new yarn, which I believe I mentioned before, but it can be downcycled or upcycled into something else. So can everything be, the resource be utilized again? Yes, 100%. All of those resources can be used again and again and again. Um, it's just finding those right avenues and those right uh, markets to get them in to actually be um, for that resource to be continued to be used um, yeah and then website hopefully everything should be up and running on Monday and it should be all look good let us know what you think cool <laughs> yeah and that's really interesting to know that everything can have a use um, it doesn't need to be going like 17 millitons or whatever you said at the beginning doesn't that doesn't need to be the case um and 
yeah, you're bringing that to life. And also the website, is it going to be like fiber.com or? Yeah, fiber.com. Um, cool. My current one is just going to be kind of restructured to focus more on personal recycling than like business recycling. I just really wanted to make that apparent at the beginning. Like what, how can I help you? What are you here for? Um, and just kind of start you on that journey after that. So. Cool. Awesome. Well, we'll be sure to share that out too. Congrats on getting that launched as well. I'm super excited to check it out next week. And yeah, to end off, I just want to again say thank you for being here and everyone who tuned in. We will be posting this live to our page if you want to rewatch it um, and look back at the conversation. But yeah, I hope you have a wonderful Thursday. I'll probably be seeing you tonight. Um, <laughs> and thank you again. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thank you for everybody who attended. Um, yeah, if you ever have questions, feel free to reach out. So. Awesome. Bye, All everyone. Right. Bye. Thank you.